Assalamu alaikum dear students. Today we are going to read the poem The Brook. Brook means a small stream. Ek choti si nadi, ek jarna, ya ek nala. Before we start the poem, I'll give you a brief introduction to the poem. In this poem, the poet is narrating a brook story in the first person. Here the poet is narrating a brook story in the first person. That means the poet, the brook is itself narrating it is story. He has personified the stream and he talks of its beginning, the journey through various landforms and finally its destination which is the river. The poet has personified the stream. Personify means when we give human attributes, when we give human qualities or abilities to the non-human objects or animals as they feel, they, they can see, they can talk, etc. And here the poet has given the human qualities, the human abilities to the brook. And the brook talks of its beginning, it talks of its journey through various landforms and finally its destination which is the river. Yani yaha pe brook apne shuruwaat ki baat karta hai, phir apne safar ki baat karta hai maktalab jaghoon se aur aakhir par jo uski destination hoti hai, yani jo uska manzil maksood hota hai, jo river hota hai, waha tak pohunchne ki baat karta hai. The poet compares a man's journey of life to the brook's journey. और पॉइंट जो होता है वो उस ब्रुक के सफर को एक इंसान के सफर के साथ जोड़ता है या कंपेयर करता है कई जगहों पर लेकिन कई जगहों पर ये उसके साथ कंपेयर नहीं हो सकता है जैसे द ब्रुक इज इटर्नल एंड फ्लोस फॉर एवर वायर एज मैन इज ट्रांजिएंट क्योंकि जो ब्रुक होता है वो इटरनल होता है ये हमेशा के लिए चलता रहता है वायरस मैन इज ट्रांजिएंट जबकि जो इंसान होता है वो टेम्पररी होता है वो आरजी होता है वो हमेशा के लिए नहीं रहता है द ब्रुक सेज दैट मैन कॉम एंड गो बट इट स्टेज फॉर एवर और ब्रुक कहता है यहाँ पे कि इंसान जन्म लेता है फिर मर जाता है लेकिन ये जो ब्रुक होता है ये हमेशा के लिए चलता रहता है बहता रहता है नाउ लेट एस स्टार्ट द पॉइंट द फर्स्ट स्टेंजा आई कम फ्रॉम हाउट्स ऑफ कूट एंड हर्म आई मेक ए सडन सैली एंड स्पॉक लॉट अमंग द फर्म टू बिक डाउन अ वैली आई कम फ्रॉम हाउट्स ऑफ कूट एंड हर्म आई हेयर इज ब्रुक आई हेयर इज Brook. I come from haunts. Haunts are those places which are frequently visited by. Here, it talks of the places which are visited by coot and hern. Coot and hern are the types of water birds. You can see these birds here in this image. This one is coot and this one is hern. Hern actually it is. Actual spelling is heron. Heron, which is another kind of water bird. Now you will be thinking why the poet has used the different spelling here. It is called poetic licenus. It is called poetic licenus. That means the poet has the pers permission to use the different uh, spelling in order to create the rhyme in the sentence. I come from haunts of coot and hern. Here the brook says that it comes from. The places which are frequently visited by whom? By Coot and Hearn. Yani, Brook kehta hai ki mein un jag hoon se, mein us jaga se aati hoon, us jaga se aati hoon, jahaan jo bar bar jin ka safar kiya jata hai, jahaan pe bar bar aate hai, koon? Coot and Hearn. I make a sudden sally. Sally means to emerge suddenly. Achanak namudar hoona. Or mein achanak Numudar ho jati ho and sparkle out among the fern. Sparkle means to shine. Or me chamakte hui a jati ho among the fern. Fern means the plantus, the green plantus without flowers. You, here you can see 
these plants are ferns to bicker down a valley main un ferns se chamakti hui behti hui aa jati hu kahan se to bicker down a valley ek wadi se flow down karte hue bicker means to flow down with a lot of noise behte hue pani ka shor usko kehte hain bicker now let's see the poetic device is used in this sentence in the first sentence the first poetic device used in the first sentence is personification personification as i earlier told you when we give human abilities to the non human objects or animals here these abilities this attribute has been given to what to the brook i i here is personification i come from haunts of goat and hern so i here is brook it is personification and the another one is alliteration alliteration means repetition of same sounds in a sentence it could be the same vowel sounds or same consonant sounds which we call assonances and consonances here you can see the alliteration here sudden sally so sudden started with the sound s and the sally started with the sound s so that this uh, use of same sounds in the sentence this is called a alliteration and the third one is and the important one is anamatopoeia 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 means the use of sound words in a sentence to in order to create a dramatic effect here you can see the anamatopoeia bicker bicker itself indicates the sound when the word itself indicates a sound that is called a anamatopoeia such as clicking of a latch clattering of monkeys hissing of snakes these are called a anamatopoeia now one more thing which we should know here is rhyme scheme rhyme what is the rhyme scheme of this uh, in this stanza uh, or throughout this poem the same rhyme scheme has been followed that is a b a b the first sentence and the third sentence they, they are the last words of these sentences are rhyming her fern and sally valley so a a and b b or we can say a b a b so this same rhyme scheme has been followed throughout the poem now let's read the sentence number second by 30 hills i hurry down or slip between the ridges by 20 tops a little town and half a hundred bridges now the brook says by 30 hills i hurry down by 30 hills i hurry down main 30 pahadon ko cross karke aa jati hu i hurry down hurry down means to run with a high speed fast speed i here is brook the brook says that after crossing 30 hills i hurry down or slip between the ridges ridges means the long narrow hill top or range and if पहाड़ी का जो ऊपर वाला किनारा होता हो होता है उसको हम रिज कहते हैं तो कहती है कि मैं तीस पहाड़ियों को क्रॉस करके दौड़ती हुई चल बहती हूँ और और स्लिप बिटवीन द रिज और फिर इन रिज से फिसलती हुई बहती हूँ बाई ट्वेंटी थॉप्स और थॉप मीनस विलेज थॉप मीनस विलेज और मैं बीस गाँव को क्रॉस करके आज बहती हूँ ए लिटल टाउन और एक छोटे से शहर को एक और एक छोटे से कस्बे से गुजरती हुई एंड हाफ ए हंड्रेड ब्रिज हाफ ए हंड्रेड मीनस हाफ ऑफ हंड्रेड दैट मीनस फिफ्टी और पचास पुलों को के नीचे से गुजरती हूँ नाउ लेट सी द पॉइंट डिवाइस इज यूज इन दैकेंड सिटेंजा द फर्स्ट वन इज एनवर्जन conversion means when we use 
object before the subject when we put the object before the subject here the object is 30 hills and the subject is i that is brook by 30 hills i hurry down the poet could have written it i hurry down by the 30 hills but he has put the uh, object before the subject why in order to lay emphasis on the subject in order to put stress on the subject subject pe zor dene ke liye emphasis dalne ke liye and in order to create the rhyme in the poem this is called a inversion this is called a inversion when we use uh, when we reverse the subject and the object and the second poetic device used in the sentence is alliteration and you can see the alliteration here half hundred who and who half which has started with the who sound that is h and the hundred which has started with the same sound that is who this is called a alliteration and the same rhyme scheme has been followed in this stanza as well that is down down ridges bridges a b a b right okay now let's move to the third stanza till lost by philip's form i follow to join the brimming river for man may come and man may go but i go on forever till lost by philip's form i follow philip's form it talks of uh, any former but here he has used uh, the name philip it is not necessary that it could be a philip ya zaruri nahi hai ki ye philip hi ho sakta ye koi aur former bhi ho sakta hai lekin usne yahan pe use kiya hai philip's form the last by philip's form i follow aur aakhir par mein philip's ke khet se guzarti hu to join the brimming river brimming means full of water full of water up to the brim yani upar kinare tak full jo hota hai to join the brimming river yani main philips ke form se guzarti hui guzarti hu kya karne ke liye to join the brimming river which is it is destination jo uska manzil hai jo uska manzil e maqsood hai us ko join karne ke liye main philips ke form se guzarti hu for man may come and man may go but i go on for ever kyunki jo insaan hota hai wo insaan aata hai aur jata hai means come that means a man takes the birth and dies and and he dies that means the man has birth as uh, and the death as well but i go on for ever lekin jo brook hota hai ye kya kehta hai ki main hamesha hamesha ke liye chalta rehta hu behta rehta hu theek hai that means the brook is eternal while as the man is transient the man is temporary right this these three lines this have been used uh, frequently uh, throughout the poem this is called a refrain when we use uh, a same line or same lines uh, frequently in a sentence that is called a refrain these are this is done in order to lay emphasis uh, on a certain thing or a certain statement right now let's see the poetic devices used in this sentence in the third sentence till lost by philips form i follow first one is inversion inversion as i earlier told you when we use object before the subject here object is philips form and subject is i i have been used after the uh, object in order to lay emphasis on the subject right till till lost by philips form i follow he could have written it i follow till lost by philips form but in order to lay emphasis on the object he has used the object before the subject this is called a inversion yani usne subject object ko subject se pehle hi use kiya hai usko kehte hain inversion 
to join the brimming river for man may come and man may go, but I go on forever. Second one is alliteration. Alliteration means the use of same sounds in a sentences. You can see m, m, an m sound, m sound, and m sound. Here you can also see. This is called a alliteration. And repetition. Repetition you can see man may. Man may. That means two words have been consecutive. Two consecutive words of same sounds have been used. When the two same words are used in a sentence consecutively, this is called a repetition. Or you can see also repetition here. Man may. This, this, these lines. These lines have been used frequently in this poem. This is also called a repetition. Or I. Told you this is called a refrain, and one more poetic device used in this poem is antithesis. Antithesis means when the two words which are contrast in meaning, which are opposite in meaning, are used very closely. जब दो opposite meaning वाले अल्फाज नज़दीक नज़दीक use किए जाते हैं एक sentence में उसको कहते हैं antithesis. क्या कहते हैं एंटीथीसिस और इट इज एन ऑफ फॉर टूडे वी विल डिस्कस द रेस्ट ऑफ द सिटन जॉज इन द अपकमिंग वीडियोज होप यू अंडरस्टैंड थैंक यू वेरी मच